Welcome to another episode of Off Script with Pastor Jared. My name is Pastor Jared. It's good to be with you guys again. I just want to say that I appreciate all of you listening to this podcast and uh, helping get it going, get it off the ground. You know, podcasts are difficult to know uh, who's listening. Uh, it's not like YouTube where you can see the views. And so um, I just want to appreciate uh, or just uh, express my gratitude to you guys for uh, reaching out to me and letting me know that these are helpful to you in your life and that you look forward to them coming out. So I just want to say thanks to the listeners. Um, I want to give a story today, uh, really two stories, that I think when I looked at them back to back, you know, not only was it just newsworthy, it was just an interesting combination of stories, uh, but I think it does really describe something that's happening a lot in our culture right now. And there's a good biblical uh, opportunity to explain a, a verse of scripture that's commonly taken out of context, I think, as well, as we do this together. So what I want to do, I think, is start with the story, because the story is just when you put these two stories back to back, it's uh, it, it really is strange that this is even happening. So first thing I want to show you is probably one you've seen already, uh, and that is that at the uh, Olympic trials are going on right now. People are uh, prepping for Tokyo next summer. They're getting themselves ready. All the time trials and the uh, preparations are being done right now. Um, and so we're seeing all across the news. I think this may be the first case of this happening. We, we knew this was going to happen at some point, but uh, there is a, uh, a trans weightlifter that is uh, going to be competing in the Olympics. Uh, the name is Laurel Hubbard. And so uh, the, the issue at stake here is that Laurel Hubbard is, in fact, uh, a biological man who is identifying as a woman and has gotten into the, the heavy weightlifting of the Olympics. So this, this person is being allowed to compete. Uh, so let's, let's think about this. Uh, we know that men and women are obviously different. Uh, so this, this is a Christian podcast, so, so we're going to just speak plainly and obviously. We know that God made them male and female, and we know that men naturally are stronger than women. Uh, now, you can always find an, uh, an example breaker. There's always going to be women that are stronger than some men. I'm sure that there are a lot of women out there, you know, you could point to, you know, UFC fighters or, you know, WNBA players or anything and say, yeah, but, you know, Jared, they could beat you up. It's like, well, yeah, they probably could. But you're, you're talking about elite athletes at that point. You know, you look at look at the the 100 meter dash winner and of the women or the hurdle jumpers for the women. And they're going to destroy 99 percent of all men. I mean, that's just how it is. But what we're talking about is that on average, uh, if you if you s took the men of our congregation and the women of our congregation, you know, generally the men are going to be stronger. They're going to be a little faster. They're going to be a little hardier. Um, you know, they could win in a cage match if that were ever to happen, which it shouldn't. But uh, uh, that's that's true of the general population, and it's true at the extremes of the population. So there's a reason why. Uh, there's an NBA and a WNBA because men, uh, professional basketball players versus uh, women, professional basketball players, it, it would be a serious uh, route. I mean, it would not even be a close game. Uh, there's a reason why there's no women's version of the NFL because it's just not even really possible or, or entertaining. Um, it's just a different sport. Uh, you know, there are women UFC fighters, but there's a reason why that they don't fight men. Uh, it's not that they're worse or anything. It's just men and women are made differently. They're com they're, our bodies are, are different. We know this. Everything I've just said used to be common sense. Uh, it's no longer common sense. And so uh, what's happening now in, is that you know, the last meritocracy, the last place where we thought this would uh, the last place standing should be sports because sports is just based on uh, what you can provide, what you can produce, what you can do when the lights are on and the, the timer is running. And so uh, we're seeing now a biological man go into women's weightlifting. Now, weightlifting is one of those sports 
some sports, let's just say some sports, men and women aren't really that different. You know, maybe curling or you know, the one where they, with the little brushes, you only watch at the Olympics. Um, you know, archery or, or, or shooting or golf. You know, there are some sports where it's just not it's not going to matter that much. Um, weightlifting is not one of those sports. Weightlifting men are are uh, the our chest and shoulders are broader. Uh, the muscles are just different. And there's this thing called testosterone that is just different. It, it is injected into our systems and makes us stronger. And so you have uh, Laurel Hubbard competing in the Olympics as a man in women's competition. Uh, this is a person who began to uh, transition, as they say, at age 35. So this is a person whose whole life, uh, they were a man, or they still are, but they were acting as a man. And then around age 35, began to act as a woman and, and transition over. And so um, what, that, what that person had their whole life was access to testosterone. From puberty on, they had full access to testosterone. And uh, that is a dramatic game changer when it comes to strength and speed and power. And in weightlifting, that's a big deal. So testosterone has pumped through this person's body from puberty till age 35, and then they decide they're a woman, and they decide to begin uh, weightlifting as a woman. And the Olympics are allowing this. That's not the story. I'm not gonna. That's not the main story. I want to give you another story as a contrast. There's a female runner named Shelby Houlihan. Okay, now my wife's a big uh, ladies track fan, and, and so I, I end up watching a lot of uh, races on TV. So Shelby Houlihan is the American record holder for the 1500 meter and the 5000 meter. So she's no slouch. She is a big deal. She's known in the sport. Uh, Shelby Houlihan has never had a record of doping or taking performance enhancing drugs or steroids. She's never had an issue with that. And then very recently, she had uh, triggered on a, a routine drug test that's part of the Olympic testing uh, that there was, let me say this right, nandrolone, nandrolone with an N, a synthetic anabolic steroid analog of testosterone. Okay, so she was surprised that this happened because she maintains that she has never taken any sort of illegal drug or performance enhancer. And so... Uh, Trying to prove her innocence, she came and provided more tests. She provided uh, hair samples. She passed a polygraph test saying that, that she swears that she never took drugs or anything. Um, tests of her uh, system revealed that there was no buildup of the substance, uh, which there would have been if she were regularly doping. Uh, so what this means is there was one, it seems like one instance where this drug was present in her system, and it was not that she was regularly taking it, but also that it was a very small amount of the substance, uh, barely there, but still enough to register the test. And she passed a polygraph, and she has been fully cooperative, and she's never taken, uh, never, never been known to take drugs before, never been uh, accused or caught of anything before. So, she is shocked because they have banned her from the Olympics. She's and she's a record holder. They've banned her for four years of being able to uh, to run, and so she's trying to figure out what this is. And so, eventually, she tracks it back to what she believes was a bad burrito that she ate at a food truck that ultimately uh, had small trace elements of this nandrolone uh, synthetic testosterone in the meat. And, uh, and there are cases that if you look up, uh, if you, it's very possible that if there is a, uh, a wild pig that is killed prior to castration, that there are large amounts of testosterone leaking into the meat. And, uh, you know, your, your less professional uh, food manufacturers might be using these. And so it, she she said on the day of the test, I ate at a food truck that was serving pork burritos and I ate that and that's where this came from. Now, there's no reason not to believe this young lady. Now, this sounds like a crazy story, 
But let's just for the sake of the argument agree uh, that that she really did eat a pork burrito, and that's what this is. So uh, if you combine the two stories that I've given you today, both in the Olympics, so the same standards should be applying. What we have is a young lady who has done things the right way her whole life that we know of. She has eaten one time a pork burrito on the day of a test that caused a false positive that showing trace elements of testosterone. She has been willing to go on a polygraph test. She has maintained her innocence. She's never had a problem before, and she's given hair samples. She's tried everything possible to, to prove her innocence because of a trace element of a synthetic testosterone. She's banned for four years. Now to the original story. Laurel Hubbard has been a man until age 35. Laurel Hubbard was a man with full puberty access, full injection of testosterone into the body over the course of years and years. Actual testosterone through the, through the body. What would register as a performance-enhancing drug anywhere else? And the Olympic Committee has rolled out the red carpet and said, this is fine, nothing to see here, this is fair. I hope you see the craziness of this story, okay? Uh, what I want to talk to you today about with this as the background is really the caution of the Christian life of living by differing standards. So one of the most popular verses that we have, uh, we hear it all the time, and it's most of the time misquoted and abused, is Matthew 7, 1. Very simply, Jesus says the words, judge not that you not be judged. Now, usually this is talked about as make no judgments whatsoever. All right. That's usually how it's, it's talked about is there is no place for Christians to be making judgments of any kind. Uh, is this a sin? I judge not. Well, is that correct? Obviously, that answer is no, because the entire Bible uh, is, is filled with making judgments. Moral judgments have to be made. Paul, in his writing, we just, we just preached this on Sunday. He says, walk in love and uh, walk as Christ did. Ephesians 5, 2, and 3. Then he says, therefore, sexual immorality must not even be named among you because you're supposed to walk in Christ. Now, if was Paul wrong to say that? Was Paul wrong to judge that sexual immorality was, was a sin? Well, of course not. Uh, the, the problem with this verse is, is it, it doesn't mean Christians are to never make a moral judgment of what is right and wrong. When someone says to us, you know, was the Holocaust wrong? Hey, judge not. Judge not. You know, I, I can't make any judgments about that. I've been commanded by my Lord that I, when, when moral questions come up, I can't make, I don't know, I, I just, I can't say anything because judge not, right? Obviously, that's not what that means. So we got to stop using it like that. If you read the passage onward, which I'm going to do, uh, it says this, judge not that you not be judged. So Jesus is talking, verse 2, he says, for with the judgment you pronounce, you will be judged, and with the measure you used, it will be measured to you. Now, he's talking to the Pharisees here. Remember that. Verse 3. Why do you see the speck that is in your brother's eye, but do not notice the log that is in your own eye? Or how can you say to your brother, let me take the speck out of your eye, when there is the log in your own eye? You hypocrite. First take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. Matthew 7, 1 through 5. So this gives us great context in what he's talking about. Jesus has been battling with the Pharisees his entire ministry. So they, the Pharisees are these holy, holier-than-thou guys with their big gowns and hats and fancy clothes, and their job is to walk around Israel and enforce the law and make sure everybody's keeping the law. And Jesus was saying, you guys are really good at judging, but in your life, you've got open and obvious sin that you're not even dealing with. 
So you want to judge everybody based on this standard of the law, but you don't want to live it in your life. And that's an affront to God. God is not pleased with this. And so he says to the Pharisees, the harshness that you judge other people with, that's the harshness that God is going to judge you with. You've got no forgiveness, grace, or mercy in your life. And you've got this log in your eye. You've got all these sins that you're committing, but you want to go and talk to other people about their sins. And and if you look at the end of the verse, the problem is not that we shouldn't be concerned with other people's sins. He says, first take the log out of your own eye, and then you will see clearly to take the speck out of your brother's eye. So the issue is not that we shouldn't care about the speck in our brother's eye. We should. It's that there's an order here. The order is that we have to take the log out of our own eye first before we can go and take the speck out of our brother's eye. So sin matters. Helping other people get out of sin matters. But we're not to go put on our fancy clothes and hats, metaphorically, as the Pharisees did, and walk around and point out other people's flaws and problems when we've got glaring, obvious logs in our own eyes. Okay, so that's what Jesus is saying. When he says, judge not that you be judged, he's saying, don't go out there and be Mr. You know, hall monitor of the neighborhood and, uh, and telling everybody else their problems when you haven't ever dealt with your own problems. Okay, that's what judge not lest you be judged means. It's about weights and balances. You know, there's, there's a proverb that I love. It says this, a false balance is an abomination to the Lord, but a just weight is his delight. You know what that means? It means God loves even standards. You know, one problem in the ancient world back before there were, you know, electronic weights, um, you'd go to the marketplace and, you know, you would want to buy Hey, I want a bag of figs from the marketplace. Okay, and so the guy at the behind the the cart gets your figs in a bag and he puts them on the scale so that he can tell you the price. And you would basically he would weigh the product for you. We still have this today in our grocery stores. He'd weigh the product for you and then you would pay. Well, over time there would be guys that would uh, add a little bit of weight maybe under that plate. There would be, you know, a little lead disc or something or a little extra stone uh, maybe added to it. It wasn't exactly three marbles. It was three marbles and a stone that was rounded off or something. And they would have this system of being able to trick you out of thinking that a fair deal had been done. That's what the Proverbs say, a false balance. You're saying one thing to one person, but then you're switching it out from under him, under the guise of truth. A false balance is an abomination to the Lord. The Lord loves justice. He does. God loves fairness and justice and equality. And so when we look at this story that has come across the news, you know, your heart hurts for the young ladies who are having to go in and lift weights against a grown man who has had full puberty and testosterone in his body. And your heart hurts for Shelby O'Houlihan, assuming she's telling the truth. Now, if it comes out she lied, we, we obviously know that that changes things. But assuming she tells the truth and she had trace elements of, of testosterone in her system from eating pork. I mean, your heart just hurts for this person who has spent their whole life trying to work hard and get into the Olympics. And, and man, that's a false balance that the Olympic Committee has done. And it's an abomination to the Lord. I love a passage that says uh, in Leviticus 19.35, this is from the law of God. It says, do not use dishonest standards when measuring length, weight, or volume. Your scales and weights must be accurate. Your containers for measuring dry materials or liquids must be accurate. I am the Lord your God who brought you out of the land of Egypt. And so this is just a reminder to us in our lives. I think we combine all these things together. Before you want to go out and you know be a Pharisee in the world, before you want to go out and, and deal with everybody else's problems, make sure you've cleaned your own house up. Make sure you're not using unequal measures and weights in the world. 
if you're going to be hard on somebody and that's okay, but you better have taken that same measure to yourself first. I, I feel this way as a preacher all the time. I have to go out and preach God's word and what it says. And God's word is sharp. It cuts like a knife. And there's days when I have to think, man, am I judging myself? Have I taken this same passage and lived by it myself? And you have to do the same thing, Christian, in your life. You have to do that. When you go out into the world and you want to tell people, don't do this, live this way, don't live this way. The answer is not, judge not, don't say anything. That's not the answer. The answer is, say what needs to be said. Say what God's word compels you to say but apply the same weight and standard to yourself. Don't be afraid to look in the mirror and say, am I living by the things that I'm commanding other people to live by? Because we we see from this text in Matthew 7, it's very possible that the judgment that God places on you is going to be the same that you extend to other people. So we have to remember that in the world. Uh, don't Don't be a hypocrite. Take the log out of your own eye, and then you can see clearly to go out into the world and take the speck out of your brother's eye. So that's my encouragement to you this week on Off Script. I hope that you have a wonderful day. Please tell a friend about this podcast. Uh, It's the best way that it spreads and news spreads about it is that others are aware of it. And you can uh, send the link, whether you're on Apple or Spotify or Amazon or Google or wherever you watch it. Uh, send that link to somebody that you think this would be helpful to. So I hope you have an awesome week. Tell somebody about Jesus, and I plan to see you for church on Sunday. God bless.